Welcome to the Legally Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Hanna. I'm pleased to introduce to you our ClioCon 2023 mini clips, mini series. I'm delighted to be rejoined by the amazing Shabam Datta. Welcome, my friend. Rob, it's so great to be back. Thanks for having me again. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. And I should point out we're recording live from ClioCon in Nashville as we speak. And I've absolutely loved it. But Amazing. before we talk about that, tell us a bit more about your role at Clio and what keeps you busy. Yeah, well, it is an awesome venue and hopefully you've got to experience some of that here, Rob. But uh, in terms of my role at the company, as you mentioned, I'm the vice president of corporate development. And what that means specifically is two main things. One, we make direct equity investments as part of Clio Ventures, which is a program that I oversee. Uh, it's a program that we launched two ClioCons ago in ClioCon 2021. And I also look out for incredible innovations that are happening in legal tech and look at companies that Clio should acquire to bring those capabilities to our over 150,000 legal customer, legal professional customers that use our products. That's a big responsibility, right? Your, your role, is, you know, you make that just roll off the tongue as if that's an easy thing, but it's not, right? To get the right thing and to, so what are sort of the thought processes? Talk us through that approach that you take to, to get it right, because we're going to talk about some of the success stories. You've got it right a lot of the time. So talk us through that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So look, it all starts with our mission and our mission, which is to transform the legal experience for all. Sometimes it sounds like a broken record repeating it again and again. But it's such a bold and audacious mission that it gives me goosebumps every time I say it. And that's what really motivates us and drives us. And we know that the, that legal experience is vast and varied. There's millions of permutations and combinations of that legal experience. And we know it's not possible for Clio to build for every single one of them. And so we've always taken a collaborative approach to delivering against that mission. And that's why we have over 250 app integration partners that are in this with us to help transform the legal experience for all. And our approach is to look for the best and innovative legal tech solutions. And if those capabilities make sense for legal professionals to adopt, we want to think about and explore bringing those capabilities inside of Clio so that we can get it into the hands of more and more legal professionals uh, so that they can run their practices and their law firms and be a lawyer and, and make it easier for them to be a lawyer or a legal professional. Why I became a super fan of Clio is exactly to your point of transforming this whole industry is so ridiculous. When you think about it, I love it, right? Because yeah. it's such an opportunity. And I think Clio is at the forefront of that. It's innovative. And I think you're just amazing in everything you do. And I think I was always taught collaboration is domination. And look at Clio, you're collaborating and you're going about it the correct way. And we is always greater than me. Um, let's talk about some of these success stories, though. You know, some of the most memorable investments that you've been involved with during your time at Clio and how have they contributed to the overall growth and success? Yeah. So I joined the company in, in 2020. And uh, I actually just celebrated my three years at Clio last week. And if I reflect back on the time that I've been at Clio, the journey first started in our, with our first acquisition in summer of 2021 with the acquisition of Calendar Rules, yeah. which was shortly followed by the acquisition of Lawyaw. Now for context uh, for your listeners, both of those technologies allow legal professionals to better interact with the court system. So with calendar rules, it allows you to automatically manage particular court deadlines and tasks, which are really important that you get right, because if you miss a deadline, your case could get thrown out and have malpractice implications for your firm and you as a legal professional. And then with Law Yaw, we allow for the completion of court forms to be done in an automated and more efficient manner because most of the information that you're populating in a court form already exists inside of Clio Manage. And so the ability to automatically populate that, uh, you know, sometimes the, that same form um, asks for your name or your address multiple times in the forms. So rather than filling it out every time, we can use automation to do so in Laya. 
And so what that allowed us to start thinking about is, well, the interaction with the judicial system or the interaction with the court system. And that's been a fascinating area that we've continued to to invest in because the court systems are antiquated and legal professionals interact very closely with the court system. And so any improvements that we can generate in interactions with the court system is a step change in the efficiencies that law firms can realize. So that's been one area I've been really excited about. And then two Clio cons ago, so October of 2021, we uh, launched Clio Ventures, which is Clio's direct equity investment program into investing in early stage legal tech companies. So we invest in series A and series B companies. And through that program, we've made three different investments uh, in companies like Proof, Steno, and even up most recently. So um, I'm super lucky to get to do what I do. Yeah. And uh, it's been it's been amazing uh, so far. But I always like the authentic side of things because we've talked a lot about the opportunities, the excitement, but this stuff isn't always easy and there's challenges. So in your role specifically, what challenges have you had to encounter when formulating sort of Clio's strategic growth strap? Yeah, I think one of the, the great things is uh, we've got a great user and customer community. We take their feedback into everything that we do. We've got a bold and audacious mission that motivates us to keep pushing the envelope on what we can do. And collaboration, I mean, that's in our DNA. We collaborate with app partners. We collaborate with our Clio certified consultant partner network and our team. And, and together, we believe in the power of being able to truly transform this industry, which is bold and audacious, but we think we can do it. But that's what that's what keeps us going. And I absolutely think you can do it. And this year's theme at Fiocon has always been about amplifying your impact, which again, I absolutely love. Um, but there's the buzzword of 2023 and you can't get off a podcast without talking about the buzzword of, <laughs> of, of, of AI, of course. So how do, I mean, you know, Fio Geo has just been announced. You know, how does the approach of the adoption of AI technologies within the company, what is, what is Clio's view on it? Yeah, that's a great question. And as you saw, Clio Duo is our uh, announced product in, in AI. And one of the things that we want to make sure uh, that we get right is we want legal professionals to be able to trust and rely upon this technology. It's new. And so many people are, you know, trying to do an experiment with with things and we've seen some false starts uh, <laughs> yeah. with, with, with this technology and so for us we know that it's important to get it right and that's what customers expect from clio that's the trust that we've earned working hard over the last 15 years of clio's existence and we owe it to our customers to bring this technology to them in a way that they feel is safe to use they can trust it, and it just works within their workflows. And that's what you'll, you, you will have seen with Clio Duo. We're excited to get that into the hands of our customers. And we think that it's going to really help change how law firms run their practice to be more efficient, to remove mundane and rote tasks, and be able to do what lawyers do best, which is practice law and deliver exceptional client service. Uh, while automation and AI take care of a lot of the administrative or maybe not so glamorous aspects of running a law firm. I agree. And the other thing that really hit home for me in Jack's keynote was, and I always talk about this, we're no longer in a B2B or B2C world, we're in a H2H H world of human to human connection. And Jack said, that. you know, with, with moving this, you know, with, like you say, removing that, it really allows lawyers to double down on the human connecting the relationship side of, of things, which is so important. One thing I'm a huge fan of with, 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 with Clio is, is community. Clio really understands the importance of that. And I wanted to talk about ClioCon because I walked up into the venue and I couldn't have got a greater greeting from Cleons, the people in the community and, and a feel. Describe ClioCon in your words. I think you summarized it really, really well. The community is what ClioCon is all about. It's not about, you know, the products that we launch. It's not about these specific sessions where you get, you know, your CLE or CPD. Yeah. I mean, all of that happens. But what's really, really amazing is 
the thousands, literally thousands of people that are here and want to play their role in this mission that we set out. And we have amazing talks and workshops and discussing best practices of how everyone can learn from each other and just elevate everyone's game. And I think that's the rising tide lifts all boats. Absolutely. And community is a great way to summarize what this is all about. And I think everyone, from my view, seems to have a voice. So everyone can be seen and heard. And I love Cleo's approach to growth and asking and engaging with clients and hearing feedback and you know really evolving. And I think it's just a really inclusive way to go about doing it. But of course, I couldn't let you go without looking forward because Cleo is a disruptor. It's an innovator. Jack talked very much about how he was very verbose about the cloud way back when. We've mm -hmm. also talked about AI and that is the, the future and it's not going to sort of strip out. It's going to strip out certain jobs for sure, but it's about moving up the food chain with that and lawyers are definitely still going to have their place. But what does the legal tech landscape look like for you as it evolves? What do you envision the next big milestone for Cleo in terms of the corporate development of our it's a great question. And again, I think it comes back to our customers. How do we continue to bring great innovations and technologies and get them into the hands of our customers in a way that has tremendous amount of impact to them, the way that they can practice law more efficiently, the way that they can serve their clients more effectively and efficiently. And I think AI, as, as we've talked about, is a great technology but we have to make sure that it's used in the right way. It is safe to use, it's reliable to use. And we're gonna be spending, we are already spending a lot of time talking about it and building on it. And I think that will just continue. It's, Jack mentioned this in his keynote, but it's very similar to shifts in technologies that we've seen, like the invention of the transistor, the, uh, the PC revolution, or uh, back to when Clio started, the move to the cloud and adoption of the cloud. But one thing that I think is is different this time around AI is that so far we've seen that legal professionals are willing and open to look at opportunities to use AI in their day to day. It's no longer, uh, oh my God, what is this new technology? And now it's our job as technologists, as a technology company, to bring it to our customers in a way that's easy to use, that has high impact in what they do. And that's what we're really excited about. I, and I'm beyond excited about that as, as well. I want to ask a final question about, we're a careers focused show within the legal world. We talk about a lot of topics, but people cannot, if you're interested in law, get excited about legal tech. Maybe someone's just starting out, right? Obviously you're in a hugely successful, great role in a great organization. But take yourself back a bit or put yourselves into people who may be starting out in their careers. What advice would you give for those looking to pursue a career in legal tech? Well, one, it's a fascinating industry. There are so many opportunities within legal tech. You know, the legal system is literally the fabric of our society. And so when you join the legal tech ecosystem or are looking to get involved, there's no other industry where you can have such a massive impact on society at large. And I think that's one of the really fascinating opportunities within legal tech. And it's an industry that has, you know, historically been described as a laggard. Yeah. It's one of the industries that has been slow to adoption of technology. While I think that's changing, we still have a long ways to go. And I think it's the opportunity that uh, technology presents itself within the legal industry that's really, really exciting uh, for, for the next years to come. I got excited, particularly, I mean, Jack talked about so much in his keynote from sort of the utilization to the realization to the collectible to the lockup to the legal. If you're just not sure what I'm talking about, check out the Legal Trends Report. It's the eighth edition. Go and listen to Jack's keynote. It was just mind blowing. But one thing that stuck to me was the legal late art and that $3 trillion opportunity. We're still early with all of this good stuff, and it just excites me. Cleo is absolutely at the forefront of it. I plan to be in Texas next year, Austin, because I think it's just amazing experience that I had. Why should people get themselves to Austin next year? I think they, they need to experience it on the ground. You know, the, the last two years being in Nashville has been amazing. We thought last year was the biggest CleoCon ever. We surpassed that this year, and I can't wait for us to do even amazing and more things and bring more people from the legal community together. It's really about that community coming together to 
do this together, to do this as a unit, and can't wait to see everyone in, in Austin next year. Me too. And I think you said it so well. And I'll say it again. I said it earlier. We is definitely greater than me. Shabam, I thoroughly enjoyed having you back on the Legally Speaking podcast. I should also point out, if you want to know more about Shabam's career journey, check out our previous episode on the Legally Speaking podcast. You can find it out there. But if people want to know more, where can they find out more about you? Yeah, well, uh, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter at Shabam, or maybe it's called X now. Um, still figuring that out, but uh, looking forward to connecting with you, your listeners, and hopefully we'll get to see many of you in person next year in Austin. Rob, it's been amazing to be back on, on the show and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute blast. But for now, over now. out.